Hi, I'm Sherry, and oh, this is Sherry Gagne. Thank you. How's everybody doing out there? I hope everybody's doing fine. Um, today we're doing our show on coop cups. Yep, coop cups and coop cages. A uh, cage, cage coops. <laughs> okay. No, wait a minute. Cage cups. cups. Cage cups. All right. I said that. Did you? Yeah. Did you say coop cups too? Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. Oh. Um, anyway, um, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, we're going to talk about cups and what are we all oh, just remind the folks. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Oh, That's good. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, please, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask us anything um, and we will try and answer it for you. Okay. Let's start out this way. Some of you may have noticed, uh, probably a lot of folks noticed, that we did not have an auction. We, uh, after giving a lot of thought and a lot of discussions, we've decided to discontinue the auctions. Not that they weren't successful, they certainly were, and we appreciate all of the folks who bought birds and who contributed birds. The biggest issue is after two or three years, I forget how long, um, we just can't find good quality birds. As most of you know, I told everybody, if you bought birds on the auction, they would be good. Um, people just haven't sent us birds for the last couple of months or so, birds here and there, but generally speaking, no birds. So without birds, we can't have auctions. So, and plus it's, well, I should say, it's, it's very, very tough to coordinate it all. Uh, and I've relied a lot on FOIs to do that for the trust. Uh, and I thank FOIs for helping us out too, but the auctions are over and, and I can't see them returning at all. The other thing, another retirement, um, I've, we've kidded about and talked about it, but I had a long conversation with my wife Vicki and my daughter Kim, and I am officially, officially retired. You won't find me here as much as you used to. And uh, uh, my only job now is to take calls from home uh, and answer health questions, uh, answer not necessarily health, just pigeon questions. Um, I have been doing that for a long time. I um, enjoy it. What I've decided to do, uh, something I have not been able to do because of all the things I have my fingers in and probably shouldn't have them in, but I do. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to spending time doing what I really, really enjoy, and that's writing. Um, Veronica and I have been working on a new book. Um, it's still... I don't know, six months away, maybe more, maybe less, but you will know it's going to be, I think, a very interesting book, but I'm working on that. I'm also going back to writing articles. I haven't written any Pigeon Magazine articles in a long time, at least without any regularity. So the Racing Pigeon Digest, Purebred Magazine, and the NPA Quarterly will all see articles on a more regular basis. In fact, um, I finished one for the quarterly today. We just have to add some pictures to it. So I love to write. Uh, if you belong to uh, a, a club, hopefully it's part of the NPA, but it doesn't have to be. But uh, if you want me to write a short article for your own club bulletin or for any other reason, uh, you give me a call. Um, I'll suggest what I can write about, or if you have a particular topic you want to write about, want me to write about, I'll be glad to do that. But today is my official retirement day. Um, so I'm going to be 70 in another six weeks. Wow. Um, you be 75? Would you believe 80? Uncomprehensible. I am. I'm going to be so 80 you're in still six going weeks. to do this uh, oh, thank you. show yeah. also. Yeah. You scared me that for a minute. Oh, yeah. We're going to continue to do the show. Um, it's obvious that people enjoy it. We have thousands of viewers. We enjoy it. 
But to be perfectly frank, it's been good for business too. So thank you for that. Don't remember, don't forget, we need questions. That's you right. send those questions in so that we can answer them. Can I, I've already cleared this with uh, the president of the corporation, that's Kim Gagné, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to offer you a free gift certificate. Um, and but you can't call in now. You you can send in your question, and uh, we'll announce whoever the winner is, and then that'll be the only question. But call Foy's after the show and ask Howard, for. Go ahead. Howard, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You have me confused. How are we winning? If I got you confused, just say what they are. I know. How are we doing? The, how are we get? Well, I'm going to ask a question. Oh, like there we go. <laughs> You're easily confused. Aren't well, you? because look, I you should have seen the look on her face. <laughs> I forgot to share it with either one of you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, we're going to ask you a question, and the first person that comes up with the correct answer will receive a ten dollar gift certificate certificate from us. Uh, and the way you get it is not to call Kim, not to call anybody else, but Veronica. I've been instructed to do that. Uh, and you, she will get your information, um, we'll send you a mail out a gift certificate or get, give it credit after the show. If you call FOIs, um, nobody's going to know anything about it, and they're not going to open the door where, um, where we're doing the show. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had an overhead camera? And they could see, you know, uh, doing this, they have no idea how cramped we are. <laughs> For, I can touch Veronica, there's a desk there. Where? Close, we're supposed to be six foot apart, but uh, we just don't have the room. Now, okay, yeah. well, we have a, a question. Uh, well, let's hear the well, Want me to give my question out first? I'll go ahead. Well, remember, if you, have, if you know the answer, I'll tell you, or Sherry will tell you, but don't call until after our show. Here's my question There are two distinct diseases that cause one-eyed colds. Give me one of the two specific diseases that the major symptom is a one-eyed cold. Yeah, they have to post it up on there. Tell me how to do it, Veronica. Post it on Facebook and we'll see it and we'll tell you that's right. Yeah, she keeps reminding all after the show. If you, win. If, you win. if you win. Don't call to see who won. <laughs> because See, that's my fault. I don't tell anybody anything until I yeah, you just announce it, it and then nobody knows what the hell to do. Anyway, okay. we got a question. All right. This is from Wendy. I wanted to know if you recommended regular supplements for hammers. Uh, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, Wendy, you stay tuned to the show. It's part of what we're going to do today. Thanks for your question. Oh, do you have something you want to talk about? Let's see, you came late. You don't have any notes or anything. I know. You're just you winging it. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, um, in announcing my retirement, don't think I don't sell pigeons anymore. Most of you know I do. I sell white homers. I sell colored homers. And I have what we call race quality racing because these birds are going to win for you if trained properly and i also sell rollers if you have any questions about the birds um call me uh, at my house i hope you have something to write on because we're going to be talking a lot of about a lot of things so not only can you call me at home about my birds because if you call the store they're just going to give you my home phone number which is Seven two four three five nine five three five five. Wow, I didn't think you just reel it right on. No, I get so, out a lot. If you want to buy birds, I got them. Uh, I also want to mention that if you want to buy babies, young birds, two thousand and twenty-one birds, we have our birds together. Slow this time of the year, but if you want young white ones or breeders or rollers, uh, two thousand twenty-one, you may want to order them now. Excuse me. Because I, I sell a lot and I've already got orders, so I ship them based on when we get the uh, order itself. Okay, we have another question from John. 
Um, hello. Can I from, say hello because he's from, from Maine? Maine. I'm just no, I think I know. No, I don't know Claude because there's only a few people in Maine. I know almost everybody. Do you? No. Wow. I wonder what city. What city are you from? Can you type that so, so Jerry will know? Hey, his question is: I have a 2020 Mortivet Mortivet hen that is passing undigested seed through her droppings. She has done it two times. She is still active and feeding. Her mouth doesn't have any residue and her butt does not have any sticky droppings or build up around it. Did you ever think we'd be talking about butts on your show? Never entered your mind, did it? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. This is the second time she has done this. I'm worried about her not digesting properly. Could it be vomit? She's not on any meds. What should I give her to treat this? I could I isolate her. Uh, once again, these droppings have completely undigested. Well, um, there's one thing you might want to try, John. Was well, John, wasn't it, Um mm -hmm. If you're not, uh, adding probiotics to your feed, do that. It, uh, probiotics have enzymes in them which help break down feed and improves the digestive system of your bird. So if you're not adding um, probiotics, that's the first thing I would do. Other than that, I, if she seems to be healthy, uh, I don't know if it is a problem. If a bird is throwing up on a regular basis and you see it on the perches, then in most cases that's a uh, something like adenovirus. But in your particular case, she seems to be healthy. She's done it twice. I don't think it's anything to worry about, but the uh, enzymes in the probiotics will assist in the proper uh, digestion. How about feed? Could it be the feed too? I don't know, I'm asking. We should learn all this stuff. I don't know, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it most likely is not. Oh, okay. Because the reason I say that is if it were the feed, you'd see other birds doing it. If this is the only bird doing it, uh, and it's probably small seeds, um, I think it's probably the digestive system, which he suggested. All right, and this question is from Tim. I always remember Hi, Tim. Tim. You do? Why do you remember Tim? I don't know. What's his last name? Bennett. And what creek do I live on? Bennett's Run Road. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says, I have a pair of rollers that abandoned their eggs after about five days um, of the second egg four times now. Um, the eggs are fertile. Uh, they are inside the loft, inside a breeder box. Good food and water. I'm using your heated nest bowls uh, in mid-Michigan. Uh, no apparent health issues, any ideas? Wouldn't you put the eggs under another pair? Yeah, he could do it, but the pair is laid four times in a row and then four times in a row where they'd have to move the eggs where the eggs are left. Mm -hmm. That's where they're leaving the net. Right. So um, hopefully um, if you have young or other pairs that are mated and have eggs laid in the nest within a day or so of the birds that you're talking about, um, not sure what breed they are, but if homers, rollers, some of the hardy breeds have no problem raising three young ones. So that's one of the solutions. If you they are rollers. Right. Okay, they are rollers. So they are uh, able to raise three. I've done it. Um, not because I want to, because of situations like yours where I have to. Generally speaking, when you're, oh, by the way, my sister tells me, See how my mind is. It just wanders. And my sister's watching. Say hi to my sister, Charlene. Hi, Charlene. How hi, are you? <laughs> Miss uh, you. You got to come visit us. My, uh, I was going to say, my brother had a heart attack, and we've been talking oh, back and forth. forth. Uh, but he's fine. And they're telling him to go back and do whatever he wants to do. Huh. But on the uh, egg situation, uh, it happens, and you've heard me talk about this before, I'm sure, that happens usually when they're a young pair uh, and they have not learned yet how to be good parents. Um, but it's very unusual for it to happen 
four times. Um, if other rollers in your loft are breeding and doing fine, it's an individual situation. Um, I don't have any idea. Can you try breeding. pairing them up with another, like trying to pair them up? You know what? I don't have to do this show <laughs> anymore. My next thought was <laughs> break the pair up. Put one hen with a different cock and a cock and the cock with a different hen um, and put them in individual cages. But if you do that, um, try to put them in different buildings or at least in different sections because uh, if they can hear each other cooing, they recognize the, the, their mate's coo or the sound. Uh, so try to do it so that they do not hear each other. Uh, that would help some too. Other than that, I wish I could help you more, but I don't know for sure. Okay, and Jim has, now that you are officially retired, are you <laughs> going to continue the show? Many of us hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> the answer, uh, as long as I possibly can, I will do it. Um, and uh, if I have to end up in a wheelchair, they'll roll me in. That's and, right. And I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I look forward to it, um, to doing the show. But... Both Sherry and I are so pleased that people take the time to watch us. I get calls all the time, and I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. I watched your show, and you said this, or you said that. Um, so thank you. It's, it's nice to know that I appreciate your saying that, that the show is appreciated. Okay, and another question from Wendy. I think we'll get too many questions. Should we tell them to stop? No. No. Oh. No, <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> says I have had a lot of hawks around lately, which has spooked me with letting my young ones fly since he successfully got one. Any recommendations on how to deter them? Well, there is no real way to deter them. People have tried balloons. They tried balloons with a single eye. Um, they've tried flags and sticks. Um, the the bird, the hawks get acclimated to whatever you do, they get used to it. And after less than a week, they know that that's not a danger, so they pay no attention to it. How about letting their uh, birds out at different times, right? You know what? You know what? Next question. You're going to answer <laughs> the question. But getting back to the question, yes. Uh, as uh, Sherry was uh, saying, you want to stagger the times that you let the birds out. If you let them out the same time every morning or every afternoon, the hawks know when lunch is served and they're going to be there because you let your birds out at the same time. So always try to um, adjust the time, make a different time. Right. Now, something else I might suggest is we brought in a trap from Belgium, no, Poland. We brought a trap in from overseas. It's brand new. It's not in our catalog, but it's on our website. It's a humane way to hopefully solve your problem. We have a trap that the hawk can enter from front or back. It's three sections, one, two, three. Uh, you put the a pigeon in the two sections, um, Anyways, you put a live bird in there. The hawk sees the live bir uh, bird. And if you've noticed when hawks uh, have uh, an interest in pigeons and you put one, if you, if you had a dead one on the ground, it would land and it would walk around it, walk around it until they finally decide they're going to eat it. So you put a live pigeon in each side, the hawk will enter and it can't get out. So you, what you want to do is don't kill a hawk. Big fine for that. Take it down the road, maybe 20 miles away, and let it go. It'll fly away, and in most cases, it will never come back. One will appear um, in, a, in a, I don't know how long, a month, two months, because hawks are very territorial. Uh, and when that hawk that you caught is moved, another hawk is going to come in and take over. So just, just have to be ready for that. Okay.
Okay, and this question is from Dana. Uh, what do you think of keeping pigeons in house? I believe the dust of birds would be be problem. Would be a problem. Well, I wouldn't keep them in the house. Well, that would that cost the more. Question: What you would do? Question is, what should she do? No. I don't. See, we it would finally, be more we finally have an answer that she doesn't. It would be more, wouldn't it be likely for them to get more, like, dizzy? No, you, would be, you would be pieces. surprised. You're, what's the difference between keeping a parrot, a big bird, in, in a house? Would they not be the same? And there are literally thousands and thousands of people yeah. who keep Well, they do. Keep you know? So, the, you're, you answered, Dana, you answered your own question in that I believe the dust of the bird would be a problem. As long as you're aware that birds do produce dust, one bird or two birds won't produce a lot, but you have to keep that that uh, cage very, very clean, but they will produce dust. But in my opinion, nothing that you would um, take notice of because it's so minimal. But you put 10 or 12 birds in a house, you're going to have a problem. So my answer to you is, if you want to do it, I, especially if you're from New York City, I've noticed this a lot. A lot of people in New York City um, who would like to keep pigeons, keep them in the house. Well, answer me this then. If, uh, the, if a pigeon, which is technically supposed to be out as an outside bird. No. No? Mm -hmm. Think, the reason I say that, there are doves this big, less than three feet long, or three inches long, and they're bred to keep in a house. But a regular pigeon? Well, um, you, in answer to your question, um, there are pigeons that are raised in the house. The rollers or homers are just a bigger version, and yes, they do produce more dirt than a pair of small Baby pigeon, not baby, but small. Would it be um, sickness wise too? Are they? Would they be more prone for sickness by keeping no, them? In? But it's good that we follow up with this. You're asking questions that I probably would not have thought to answer. But um, the birds, if you put them in a house and you decide you want to put them outside instead of keeping them in a house, don't do it in the winter. They've already acclimated themselves being in a heated room. If you let them go or put them in a cage outside, um, they they may react adversely to that. They may get sick or they just might die because they haven't built up uh, the resistance or the energy to fight off the cold. Okay, good to know. So we're a hell of a team, I'll aren't tell we? You. We haven't had an answer to our question. Oh, I didn't ask the question. Oh, yes, I did ask the question. Yeah. Well, I'm asking you again, if you have a pigeon or any pigeon that has a one-eyed cold, there are, go ahead. Two diseases that causes this. Yeah. And if you give us one of the two answers, you'll win a $10 gift certificate. And the reason I, I preface it by saying uh, diseases, there is a, a way a pigeon can get a one-eyed cold, but that's through a draft, and it's so hard to des describe, I get questions, what's the difference between a draft and a wind? The only way I explain it is a draft is usually a very small opening that a breeze comes through, or air is coming through, the bird that in question that has one I call almost always has a perch where there's a draft. If, and I tell people, try this. If your bird has a one-eyed cold, here's what you do to cure it. But what you may want to do is wherever that bird is perching, and you go in at night, where that bird is perching, take that perch down. And the bird can't perch there anymore. And if it is a draft, you'll see the bird doesn't get one-eyed cold. Yes. Okay. And there's two, two answers. answers. And what is your answer? The answer? No. The one says cancer, a canker. The answer is no. Brian suggests respiratory. Uh, respiratory is not a disease. Respiratory is a, 
a family of diseases, just like colds and pneumonia that we get, um, sniffles, cold, or one eye cold. So the answer is close, but it's too general. It, uh, saying it's respiratory, respiratory is not a specific disease. Okay. Uh, what This is from Josh. What type of perch do you prefer in the young bird section? The same as the old bird section. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if you're asking me what perch do I like, my favorite perches, I've got three. The, the one that uh, and probably the least expensive of all of our purchase is that little, um, what we'll call them? Space saver. A space saver perch. The other one would Deep be perch. the perch with the clip on it. Um, it comes out, sticks straight out. Uh, a block perch. Yep, the block perch. Um, the third one would be um, the Deep V perch, perch that oh. uh, John makes. What's that called? Heavy duty perch. Well, it's either a regular V perch or you could get the um, heavy duty one, which well, is the same, well, but I, a little bit heavier. We sell products that I don't like. We sell these products because people like them, not to make sure it's not a personal thing. But some of the V perches, remember, the reason for a V perch is the droppings come down on both sides. Problem is, you have to clean those perches on a regular basis. And they are secured with uh, with uh, glue, and they're secured with staples. But the continuous cleaning with a uh, a scraper loosens them up. So within a year, you're wondering why you bought those V perches. The heavy duty one. I like it's, that. One. It's really strong. Mm -hmm. So number one would be the space saver. Number two would be. The block perch. And number three. Heavy duty bee perch. And they're all pictured on our website and in the catalog. Okay. Thanks, Josh. And this uh, question is from Tracy. Um, I have a hen that her vent is constantly swollen as if she is about to lay, uh, but there is no egg in, in her. This happened to her, to two other hens, oh, and they died. What could be the problem? Please help. Isn't that, but if it's a, if she says there's no egg in there. Mm -hmm. but, An egg would cause it, but there's another disease. Oh, that, okay. That absolutely does. Um, I guess I would ask, first of all, what do you feed? So Tracy, you can send it back to me. What do you feed? Um, and evidently it's happened before and you've lost two. I have to repeat that I'm almost 80 years old and you can't think and my memory is not what it used to be but I'm going to give you my home phone number Tracy I'm going to give you a minute to get some pe a piece of paper and a pencil or pens okay right yes would you put about a magic mark no. what do you call them things sharpie would work yeah. oh yeah sharpie. so one of those things and on a piece of paper my home phone number um, and if you call me at home um, Tonight, after five, I may not answer it, but you can't leave a message, that's intentional. But I'm, all I need you to do is call me. If I'm not home, uh, guess what? You're not gonna answer. I'm not gonna answer, it's my landline. So you call me at home, uh, and if I miss your call, I will call you back. Uh, and also, Tracy, what do you feed and what state are you from? The reason I ask that is uh, people do call me, I got a call this morning, uh, no, last night, and I called back this morning at 8 o'clock. Well, the call was from California, uh, and it was 5 o'clock in the morning there. Yeah. So I didn't feel real bad because the person who called me from California last night uh, called me at 9.30 my time. So it kind of worked out. You know, he bugged me at 9.30 at night. I bugged him by calling him at five o'clock in the morning. So uh, just tell me what, what state you're from. Boy, it's, isn't that great all these questions? I know, I like questions. Now, I'm really surprised nobody, well, we did have a guess on that. What, when I called yeah. him, that was, we didn't get, we got two guesses and they were both wrong. Okay, and this question is uh, from Anthony. 
What is the best use for conditioning? Thank you and have a wonderful day. Well, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You can get this for me or for you. Have us. Okay. Well, Anthony and the Tokam, I'm going to call him Tony if you can touch up along it. Maybe if you wanted to be called Tony, he would, he would have, have said so. Okay, Anthony. Um, first question is, are we talking about a supplement? Um, because the reason I asked that is we sell a conditioning feed, which is a great feed, made for conditioning. And when you say conditioning, that would be for flying your rollers, flying your homers, or um, going to, going to show you birds. And conditioning is not an overnight process. It's not even a month process. You've got to do it for a period of time to get them in a best of condition. So, number one, it's feed. Good conditioning feed. Number two, there. if you go to our website or if you go to our catalog, there are supplements that will improve the condition of your birds. One of them would be uh, probiotics. Hope that helps a little bit. Uh, my home phone number, if you need more information, 724-359-5355. I figure with me retiring, I'll give out the number more because I'll be getting more questions. Um, and I, generally speaking, don't answer the call, my calls until, or, or after, if they're at Eastern Standard Time after five o'clock. If I'm really bored, or there's no game on, and I, I see the phone number, I may call you and I surprise people. I sometimes call them on a Saturday or, or Sunday. One day, I can't believe this. You're calling me on a Sunday. I'm saying, well, I, and I had something, nothing to do and I thought you might have a health question. So, well, all right. Can we, any other questions? Oh, okay. I want to try to get this in. We, I know we we're going to talk about coop cups. That's the most, not the most important thing. Um, and we don't show products we're going to be talking about if we have the time um, to brag about what we sell. We get questions, and so many people tell us they'd rather see it in our hand. Being in my hand, you get an idea of what size it is, something like this. Uh, when you see a picture, it could be this big or this small. You don't know because Veronica's sneaky. She uh, took me a couple of years to figure this out. She will take a product like this, and if, she, if there's more room needed in the catalog, I mean, she's got a big space she wants to fill, she makes the product bigger. Hmm. Don't you? Okay. So you can, just looking at it. I wonder if you have a big hand or a little hand. How are you going to know the, the size? As I was going to say, this, you know, <laughs> but just then I want to talk about probiotics. You all know what a show, I'm assuming you all know what a show cage is. If you go to a pigeon show, they have vertical lines with cages. You put it in this way, it's made to fit a show cage. You turn it this way and it locks into the uh, cage itself, can't move, and you can use it for feed or water. But I wanted to talk about uh, probiotics because it's an important time of the year. Most people are putting their birds together. A lot of them are breeding already, and a lot of people wait until March or April. Um, and in writing the article that I wrote today, or my book on it for three days, um, one of the, the things I wrote about it was probiotics. And doing the research, it taught me and or remi Ryan reminded me Questions I get sometimes, so I'll ask you. I'm not even going to let you see the answers. Okay. Can you mix probiotics with apple cider vinegar? I have no idea. Can you mix probiotics with garlic? I would think yes. Okay. Can you mix probiotics with garlic? No, I'm sorry, with vitamins? Yes. Okay. One out of three, you're absolutely correct. The other one is you thought probably you are correct. The first one, I'll have to give you the answer. Let's uh, ask Brian. Oh, let's answer Brian's question. Is it? Per question. Per typhoid? 
Is that for the gift certificate? Oh, I'm told. Thank you. No, it's not, Ryan. Neither one of them. Got to do some research. That's what they make the internet for. <laughs> <laughs> I always like it when I do uh, stump some people. This is, uh, I think, uh, this is from Dana. Thank you for the answer. Just my opinion is no. All the birds I sold for people to keep in ha in house. They all brought them back. I never kept a bird or birds in house. Maybe I could see garage, but believe they need lot. I don't raise birds anymore, but have had for years. Sad I don't know any other people raising birds. Uh, and and I knew I knew many. Well, I thank her for Daniel for your input. Um, but um, what is right for you? Was not necessarily right for everyone. I, in fact, I have to plead guilty. Um, when I lived in Maine, we had a house, a big old house, and I had one big room with pigeons. Um, I know I didn't keep them in a cage in the living room, but I had a section where I shut the door and I had my pigeons in there. In, in New York City and other places, there are a lot of people who keep pigeons in their home. So it isn't for everybody. I don't necessarily recommend it as you do not, but it is done. Okay, this is from Char. I have an OGO hen. Old German owl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now a roller after laying their second egg seems to be paralyzed. Uh -huh. no, the it's okay. First, oh. Uh, the first hen is okay uh, after about three time periods, um, four time. days, yeah. but the oh, eggs, three to four days, okay. Uh, but the eggs, not both, are older hens that have raised babies. Wouldn't it because when they roll, they lay an egg, it takes all the calcium out of them? Hey, I got it right. <laughs> it's not going to happen to all hens, and sometimes it happens to a hen that it's never happened to before, even though she's had uh, young ones. It's a depletion of calcium in the body. And not every bird has it, and this time she might have it. It's always a hen, and the next time it may not be, depending on how much good grit she's eaten. Um, what happens is that depletion of calcium creates a limp. It could also be a wing, but it's usually a limp. It's the calcium is depleted from the joints, like the elbow of the, of the bird's leg. And that depletion of calcium creates a tremendous amount of pain to the bird as it bends its leg. Sometimes they'll lay right down with both legs bothering them and they'll lay down. And exactly what you said, give that bird two or three more, two or three days, sometimes just one day, it'll be gone, the bird's fine. So it's not necessarily sickness. It's a, a lack of calcium that is particular to that one bird. Doesn't mean you're, you're using the wrong grit. It just means that bird, uh, for whatever reason, maybe didn't eat the grit. Um, what you may want to do, and it's something, did we order that anise oil with the grit? We ordered that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the problem itself is not unusual. One thing you can do, we sell anise oil in big bottles and tiny bottles. You know, all you really need is a small bottle. Um, maybe when you know that bird is going to be laying uh, in her nest box, or you can do it to all your birds, put your regular grit down and two or three drops of anise oil. And anise oil has an odor that the pigeons cannot resist. Uh, so she may have a tendency to eat more grit, especially if you put it in a nest box. Okay. This question is from Josh. How many racing pigeons would you keep in a five by six foot section? 20. Well, that was quick. Hmm? That was well, quick. right around 20. Uh, eight by eight, I tell people about 30. That's not a it, a lot of it depends on what breed the racing homers or a medium-sized breed. Um, rollers, I would probably say 25. Um, home Racing homers, 20. I mean, you can stretch that a little bit, maybe 
21, 22. That's about it. Worst thing you can do is crowd your patients, create stress, stress creates disease. Alrighty, and look, we have an We answer. have a winner. <laughs> we have a winner, Wendy. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. She got the Go correct ahead. answer. It's mycoplasmosis. Yeah. Um, and Michael, she was on the internet. Okay. Anyway, uh, mycoplasmosis is usually caused, as Wendy uh, says, folks. They, folks can't see that picture up there, right? At home. Okay. Um, so ventilation is just so important. Um, number one, uh, the bird, the birds themselves, um, with mycoplasmosis, is cool. And what's the other one? Chlamydia. What? This? Chlamydia. Yeah. Yes. Mycoplasmosis or, or chlamydia. They are caused a lot of times um, by a fungus, and a fungus is caused, just like she said, poor ventilation. Uh, a fungi or fungus, um, when it um, ha when you have fungus, it's they breathe out a spore. Mm -hmm. S P O R E. That spore is likened to an egg. They're breathing them out. They're very minute. The pigeons suck them in as they are breathing, and that creates fungus. Uh, in their um, body, so that could be an issue. I had one customer, and I told the story, but by the way, we have to tell the story. I know, you just like this. <laughs> we got a story to tell you, customer. But anyways, I had a customer call me, and we could not come up with an answer as to why his birds were sick. We just tried a thing, after, nothing worked. Finally, uh, I, I asked him, I says, what kind of ceiling do you have in your pigeon coop? He says, drywall. And he says, well, let me ask you this. Um, if you look in four corners of your ceiling, do any of them look discolored? Yes. What it was, the solid ceiling had no holes in it for ventilation. And above it were, were weather changes, dampness to in one spot, the dampness stayed there, and that dampness created mold, which got into the loft, which caused the problem. He dropped the ceiling, and he found out it was a lot of moisture up there. He dropped the ceiling, put a cave, put wire on the ceiling, and uh, got rid of the problem. Okay. I ask you this question. Apple cider vinegar. Can you mix it with vitamins? Your answer was? No, your answer was yes. That Which one? Oh. Probiotics and vitamins, yes, no yes. problem. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then I asked you about uh, can you add vinegar, vinegar and garlic together? Ah. And your question, your answer was I'm not sure. No, I thought I said yes to that one. No, no. no. Okay. Yeah, okay. Whatever, no. I can't remember. <laughs> well, the answer is yes, it can be done. Which one? Yes. Uh, um, Garlic. Vitamins and garlic. Vitamins and, no. Apple cider vinegar and vitamins is fine. You can Apple cider vinegar and garlic is fine, but there's a but there. But apple, I'm sorry, but garlic is a natural probiotic. Now you can do it. You're going to increase the uh, uh, value of a probiotic, but you don't have to do it. It's like adding vitamin A uh, from one company and vitamin A from another company to both vitamin A. Hmm. Well, probiotics and garlic, um, no need to do it. The other one I, I mentioned was, um, can you... Apple cider vinegar can, and probiotics. Can you, can you put apple cider vinegar and probiotics together? And I just answered it, didn't I? Am I confusing oh, you? No, I had to think about it, but it's already. Oh, I thought you said garlic was a natural. Gar I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm your right. Garlic and vinegar, no need. Vitamins and vinegar, fine, not a problem. It's a good thing to do. Then I've got vinegar and probiotics. Um, well, can you put, I guess that is a third yeah, one. Yeah, because you just said garlic is a mm -hmm. natural probiotic, right? Mm -hmm. So if you do, you said that that was okay. 
Yeah. So yeah. vinegar and a probiotic would be okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what it said. Yes. I just stop. Folks, you know what? We you probably think confused. I should confuse you, folks. <laughs> you ought to be around the store. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the things about probiotics, I wanted to get this by. We'll go, we'll probably go a little late today, but I don't think anybody will complain. Anyway, um, I get calls about wanting to put weight on their pigeons, and what's the what the way you really say? Peanuts. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, turns out in the research, everybody that are all the research that I did from different veterinarians and so forth tell you that it will put weight on your pigeon. So continue use if you want to. You can add a little bit more probiotic. I thought corn also. Corn on. does. Yeah. But I'm not talking about corn. I so just, I know. I was just giving another suggestion if they want to put weight on their birds. <laughs> Another thing I learned about probiotics, number one, give probiotics year-round every other day. Every other day. If you're not, you're underusing your probiotic. The other thing I learned is that by adding probiotics to the drinking water, it increases the nutrition, nutritional value of your grains, your pigeon grain, not pellet. But if you add it, the probiotic and regular use, it makes the feed more nutritious. Okay, I read that down. You learn all kinds of stuff. That's right. Okay. Do you have anything you want to say? No, go ahead. I don't know what you, I'm winging this. Remember, you didn't give me no notes or anything, so. I guess we can go on to our uh, cups, or do you have something No, else? I got something else. Well, then why? Well, I don't even think we're going to do cups, because we only got five minutes. What we're going to do is put all of these in a the big box and talk about it the next one. Is that all right with you, Veronica? Mm -hmm. I think this is just as important, if not more important. Yes, it is. I okay. believe so. It's, it's the time of the year where people are already breeding or putting the birds together and and planning on breeding or in the midst of breeding. So one of the questions or comments I receive an awful lot is I always treat my birds before the breeding season to clean them out. They just do. Um, I'm going to answer the question or the comment by saying that's foolish. You cannot medicate your way to good health. You can use supplements of different kinds and we like talk about vitamins like and things yes. like that uh, that's not a, not a problem but and i always just kind of say it like this your birds all now there's a caveat here if your birds are sick of course you're going to medicate but if your birds are perfectly healthy you're foolish for using antibiotics number one eventually they develop resistance but more importantly think of it this way would be like you taking cold medicine when you don't have a cold, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Looks better on you than it does on me. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Would you take medicine, um, amoxicillin, or any medicine that might um, prevent you from getting sick in a month? That's crazy. You can't do it. And you're using antibiotics on healthy birds that don't need antibiotics. Just like she said, would you take antibiotics so you don't get a cold next month or next week? Of course you wouldn't. Now, another thing that people do, and I sell the product. What, what would you say? You don't mind? Want to leave it on? No. Okay. When that's one, hot. Huh? That's hot. Well, that's what the girls tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the, th the things that people do also, and they're what are probably our two most um, the best sellers in the store. This is a cold question. I know you weren't thinking about it. As in vitamins and or medicines, medicines. Medicine. Yeah. Um, I would say three in one and mm -hmm. four in one, and amoxicillin. What's in one? What's three in one, four in one, and all in one. 
all in one, which was it's also called five in one. Mm -hmm. Those three. Five. I I tell you, don't use five in one. We sell it. It's a bigger seller. Don't use five in one. Our second bigger seller is four in one. Mm -hmm. Don't use it in the in the uh, method that we're talking about. Oh, pre-breeding. And the reason you don't, if you look at five and one and if you look at four and one, they have antibiotics in them. You don't need them. Three and one. The three most common diseases of pigeons are canker, coccidiosis, and worms. Right. And in three and one, there are no antibiotics. So if you want to use anything, three and one is the product you want to use. The second one, if you go from three and one, I would go to four and one. And then five and one. Okay. Well, I think it's good information, don't you? Yes. I want to see because the show's almost over. Oh, the story. Do you want uh, to tell it? You want no, to tell? you can tell it. Huh. It's, it's a good story. You it's a, a, and it's a true story. It happened true. yesterday, didn't it? Or was it the day before? It must have been that he came in yesterday. Okay, so it was yesterday. So the gentleman came in and he uh, he buys birds from me uh, occasionally. He raises uh, pointer dogs and he uses the pigeons. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't kill the pigeon. He just uses them to train his pointer dogs. And I shout him what we call mismarked. We raise solid white pigeons for the funerals and things like that and sell them. Um, but all white birds occasionally send develop or breed colored feathers, black tail, one black feather, maybe some speckles on them. So he buys them from me and I sell them to him for less money because I have no use for them. They're not good race quality and they're not pure white. So he says, now you're not going to believe this, Terry. And he must have said that oh, eight or ten times. You're, it's the truth, it's the truth, it's the truth. He says, about Eight days before this <laughs> happened, or before I figured it out, he says, I had six birds out there flying. And they were doing fine. And I guess he lost, he wasn't paying a lot of attention to them. But then he looked where they would normally come in, and there was only one bird. Five had disappeared. Is that close enough to the Mm -hmm. So he said, I don't know what happened to him. He said, I just figured, like you tell me, what happens occasionally is a hawk will hit into a flock and they're terrorized and they fly off in different directions. And if they're young birds, sometimes older birds, but young birds, they may get lost because by the time they figure out, I better turn around and go home. They don't know how to get home. So he says, I waited um, and only one bird. He says, one day. Two days, three days, no birds. He said, I just gave up. Um, that's one of the reasons I called you. I'm making the story even better, aren't I? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a true story. Mm -hmm. He says, right around Christmas, he says, I usually light the uh, fireplace. He says, so, uh, he says, I better clean out the fireplace. Now, this is eight days later. He says, I open the door from the fireplace to get the ashes out, and what do I find? Two birds sitting there. <laughs> Two birds sitting there <laughs> looking at him. And he he got them both out, perfectly healthy, no feed, no water, eight days. He went to the back door and put them into the air, and they flew around, and they came in. He says, well, he says, I got a fire uh, wood burner in the basement. And he said, I better go check that. He goes down there and opens up to look at the wood burner where the chimney is. And what does he find? Two more birds. Two <laughs> more birds. <laughs> he says, I could not believe it. I took the two of them, went to the door, threw them into the air, flew around, went right back here. He says, well, out of the six birds, one stayed originally. And then he says, I was back to five. And I lost one. Yeah. That is a true story. I just could not believe it. I shipped pigeons one time. To Puerto Rico, and they got lost. And then the post office finally found them six days later, and they were fine. Here's a guy, eight days later. Maybe there was some like they were pecking at the residue, like the charcoal. 
Nope. Yep. 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 There's charcoal. Oh, Kids would love charcoal, although I don't know how nutritious it is. <laughs> well. Is it time to say so long? So long for a while. Thank you very much. I feel almost like, what's your name? Uh, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> so long for a while. And he goes to the closet. Mr. Rogers is local from Pittsburgh. Yeah. He goes to the closet, opens the door. Gets a sweater. Gets his sweater and puts his sweater down on and sits down and takes his tennis shoes off and his tennis shoes. His shoes off. And he would say, so long. <laughs> Hey guys. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. See you in two weeks, which is February 5th, Veronica says. All Thanks right. for watching. If thank you. Have you. Any conditions or anything you want to talk about, call Sherry at Foy's and she'll take note of it. And uh, if it gives me some time to do some research, if you have a question, send it to, uh, to Sherry, uh, Foy's attention, Sherry.